In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can safely store all your files, how to best organize them so that they're easy to access down the line, and most of all, I'll be showing you how you can remotely access any of your files from anywhere in the world using this, using these, and eventually down the line, upgrading to one of these. Before we get into the video, I think it's worth explaining my storage solution evolution. How I've started as a travel vlogger with just a single external hard drive to now having an entire data storage ecosystem that, as I said before, allows me to access my files anywhere from the world. I could be in Thailand rushing around in a tuk-tuk through Bangkok and accessing my files from this storage solution back here at home. Or I could be in the Philippines on a remote island and still be able to pull up the photos that I took three years ago. That is what I want to get into. So let's get started. The storage solution that I started off with is one of these right here. Ignore the post-it note, we'll get to that in just a bit. But this right here is a four terabyte Seagate hard drive. Uh, they're basically the only hard drive I use aside from the Lassie drives. And the Lassie drives, they're a bit more rugged. They can handle a drop. They actually have a drop test of like 1.5 meters. So if you're on the road like I am, I tend to prefer to have this. It's just an extra peace of mind, but they're owned by the exact same parent company. So the internals under the hood are both being made by the same great company. And I should say upfront that this is not a sponsored video aside from this beast of a hard drive that I'll talk about in a little bit. This has been kindly provided by the Lassie team. Now back to the essentials. In a given day as a travel vlogger, I'm shooting with my 1DX Mark II and my Phantom 4 Pro, which creates some very sizable files. In a given day, I'll shoot around 100 gigabytes and I have to be able to store those files and be able to hold on to them for theoretically the rest of my life. My number one advice for anyone making videos, never delete your files. I used to delete my files when I first started travel vlogging and I am currently regretting it so, so much. It's never worth it. It is always worth buying an external hard drive and storing those files because you never know when you might need them. When I first started my travel vlog, I used to basically take all of my footage from the day and import it onto one of my two terabyte Seagate hard drives. I had all of my eggs in one basket. In my three years of travel vlogging, I have only had one issue with my storage solutions and that was about a month ago when one of my drives did go corrupt. I lost about a week's worth of footage, but to be completely honest, I consider myself very fortunate to have been a filmmaker and a travel vlogger for three years and that to have been my first real issue. That is one of the reasons that I consistently buy the Lassie and the Seagate hard drives because this right here is my most valuable asset. Knowing that hard drives are not perfect and 100% security cannot be guaranteed, this is how I've now updated my storage solutions and basically what I like to do is when I'm on the road, when I'm backpacking, when I'm traveling across different countries, I now travel with two of these. Typically, there'll be four terabyte hard drives. Uh, what I will end up doing is at the end of the day, I will transfer all the files from my Canon camera onto my hard drive. And then typically every week, I will do a double backup where I'll move from one four terabyte hard drive to the other one. Every file should be frequently saved in at least two places. In a perfect system, I would do the double backup backup every day, but it's simply too time consuming, especially when I'm shooting every single day and I'm a one man to two man team. It works for me to do a backup every week. And as I mentioned, it's only backfired once. So for the most part, this is a system that's working quite well. So that is how I store my files from the road. But what do I do when I finally get home from one of those big trips, whether it's been a month or two months on the road? Well, essentially what I'll do is I'll come home and I'll have that four terabyte hard drive. After a month, it's getting pretty close to full for me and because I shoot so much I need to find ways to kind of cut down the cost and to keep my files safe because as I mentioned before these can be some of my most valuable assets you never know if somebody's gonna contact you saying hey could I buy that shot off of you from 2015 I'm willing to pay 10 grand for it but you definitely will regret it if you deleted that file so what I end up doing is I take that full hard drive the one that I've been traveling with and I back it up onto a cheaper and slower solution these are eight terabyte hard drives, they actually have to be plugged in so they can't be powered by your laptop. But if you're just leaving them at home as a secondary backup, then I really highly recommend getting into this sort of system. And over the next X amount of hours, it's gonna be transferring files onto here. So now that I have two copies on here and on here, what I end up doing, I take this hard drive and I format it. So now I have actually freed up a new four terabyte hard drive because there's no use in having it in three places unless it's truly a very valuable file, in which case that's actually not a bad practice. Over the past three years, I've probably shot about close to 30 terabytes 
and I would say about 20 of those terabytes came from this year because my files are getting exponentially bigger as I keep upgrading my cameras and as I shoot more. But that is why it's important to evolve with your data needs. And I wanna show you my newest storage solution. This is kind of my old technique. And now I'm gonna show you my new technique. My new technique is the exact same when on the road using two hard drives, making sure that as frequently as possible that all files are on at least two of these drives. When I come home though, that is when this new beast comes into play. Just about two and a half months ago, I got one of the craziest packages in the mail that I've ever received. I felt like it was being delivered from the FBI in like a military grade case. Let me show you something. <laughs> this right here is what my hard drive was delivered in. I feel like this could protect my hard drive from a ballistic missile. This is a Pelican case. It's got like a little carrying handle so you can wheel it around. You'll probably need the wheels because this case itself is probably a solid 25, 30 pounds. Now I just look weak after admitting how light it was. And this hard drive is probably another 30 pounds. So altogether, a very sturdy and professional setup. What I do when I get home, I take my hard drive, I plug it into my computer, and my computer is also plugged into my six big hard drive here by Lassie. And what it does is the exact same thing as before. I end up transferring all my files onto this here. But what is very unique about this hard drive is two things. Well, maybe there's a few things, but the two main things that stood out to me are the exceptional speed. The read and write speed is insane on this thing. It averages around two gigabytes per second. And if you've ever been working with big files, if you color grade and you work off of your external hard drive, this is a game changer. I've never been able to enjoy my editing so much as when I edit with this. The speeds are out of this world. Now the second best thing about it is that it gives you peace of mind. Unlike this hard drive where if the drive dies, I may have lost everything on here. With my six big hard drive, I actually have six different drives working together. And what they do is when they get files, they actually massage them throughout each other. And so you can actually survive having one of these hard drives die and still have 100% of the files. So for me, that is incredible, especially when, like I said, my most valuable asset is the files that I store on these hard drives. So that peace of mind cannot be replaced and it's worth every single dollar. Okay, I just thought of what the third best thing is about this. It's also a centralized storage system. For me, I've got 48 terabytes all accessible from one place. So that means no more pulling out all the hard drives, trying to figure out where is that one file stored. That is one of the big issues I used to face, but not anymore because everything is in one drive. And the great thing is actually, is that four things now? Right now there's eight terabytes in each slot, but you can actually expand up to 12 per slot. When you invest a lot of money in a solid hard drive like this, it's great to know that you can upgrade with the advances in technology. So how do I organize my files? With about 15 of these laying around the house, it's super important to know which hard drive has what files. You don't wanna be spending all day plugging in the drives, trying to retrieve those files, especially if you don't have a centralized system like the six big. I've just been putting post-it notes on all of my drives, giving a bit of outline of what's inside of it. Right here, I have Hawaii 2007, Ireland 2017 so I know exactly what files are stored on this drive and that way I don't waste any time once I'm inside of the drive how do I organize well typically what I do is I create a folder for every single trip if I'm going to Thailand I don't just call it Thailand I call it Thailand 2016 because if you're someone like me who goes to the same places more than once then things will get confusing if you don't add the year once I have the Thailand 2016 folder I typically create a folder for every single day that I've been shooting and I'll add in an extra descriptor based on where we were shooting. So if I was in Bangkok, it'll be called day one, Bangkok. The next day, let's say we went to Koh Tao, it'll be called day two, Koh Tao. Now within those folders, we take it a step further. I used to just drop all my files into a folder, but as I've become more professional and need to be more organized with all my storage, I now break it down by what camera it was shot on. If it was shot with the 1DX, I have a folder for the 1DX. If it was shot with my drone, I have a drone folder. If it was shot with a GoPro, there's a GoPro folder. That way I can quickly and efficiently organize through my files and that's as far as I take my file organization. There's no use in separating photos from videos. I can do that using my computer. All right, so now I actually wanna show you how I've been able to take my storage to the very next level. Something that I'm very excited about and this is addressing a huge need of mine. There was so many times where, like I've given the example before, I would be in these remote countries. I could be up in the mountains of Machu Picchu or on a remote island in Cambodia, and then I would get that email from somebody who needs some sort of file from me, 
and typically my only answer was sorry you're gonna have to wait till I get back home till I get back to Canada to my home studio because that is where the file is stored or at the very best I could tell them that I'll transfer them the file maybe I had the file with me but so often my internet could not support that if I had to transfer them let's say 30 gigabytes of raw footage there was no way that I was sending that from Cambodia or from Peru but now that I have all my files sitting here on my six big hard drive the amazing thing is I don't have to use the internet in Cambodia I can use the high-speed internet from back home here in Canada so if somebody says hey I need all of your shots from Hawaii which is like 200 gigabytes 300 gigabytes maybe I can actually send that to them in several hours instead of several years <laughs> as it may have been in Cambodia or in Thailand so for me this is a lifesaver it means that I don't have to travel with 15 hard drives on me and maybe the files not for a client maybe the video file is actually for me if I'm doing a video where I'm doing like a three throwback and I want to pull together some of the old footage that I've shot well now I can actually send myself using a service that file from my hard drive all the way to my computer in Bali or wherever I'm located so let's talk about how I actually do that one more thing I will say is that in order to remotely access a hard drive, you're going to need a remote computer to act as like a server. Basically a computer that you're going to leave there constantly connected to that hard drive. So in my case, I went to Best Buy and I bought myself a Mac Mini. This computer right here, super low profile, works well with my desk space, and I think it was probably no more than about 400 US dollars. So it's not crazy quick, but it does the bare basics. For this example, let's pretend that my laptop is traveling with me in Bali. This is my method of accessing my hard drive and my Mac mini, the server, is going to be staying here. So now I'm going to need a software so that these two computers can talk to each other because how else am I going to get this computer to send files to this computer? The software that was recommended to me by the Lassie team is actually called LogMeIn. The awesome thing about LogMeIn is that it actually allows me to control the mouse on the other computer. So as long as this computer is turned on, I can actually see what that computer is doing. I can go into this hard drive just as I would on any other computer. LogMeIn is not crazy cheap. It's around $350 to have access with two computers. This is definitely getting into the business side of things. This is not so much for the hobbyists, but it's not completely out of reach in price range. Even though the computers are now communicating, I can't send across the internet massive files. Using services like Dropbox or my personal favorite, which is myairbridge.com, you can send up to two gigabytes completely free. But if you pay like something, I think it's like two pounds per month, you end up being allowed to transfer up to 50 gigabytes in a single transfer which for me is fantastic because for most of my client needs 50 gigabytes will suffice but there is the occasion where you need to transfer 100 or 200 gigabytes and that's when you can even look into the different tiers that they do offer that allow for bigger transfers now there's no denying that the six big hard drive is a hefty investment and it's well beyond what most people are needing if you consider yourself to be like an entry-level professional you want to take it seriously you want to have that remote access connection from home and you don't need that that much storage then this right here is for you this is a too big hard drive and what it has is it's got two ports instead of six this will allow you to have a remote access from home up to 20 terabytes even 24 terabytes if you put 12 and 12 and to be able to do it extremely quickly I have been having one of my assistants edit off of this one right here and it's fantastic because one of the problems when you're editing off of an external hard drive is that they're not always super quick because they don't have an external power source and they're just not built to have like really fast speeds. And so when you use something like a two big or a six big, your editing just becomes so much more enjoyable. It makes the renders faster for your color grades, for your effects, for whatever you're doing, even just navigating through your timelines, your clips, your thumbnails, everything loads lightning quick when you use something like the six big or the two big. I highly recommend that if you're working off of a hard drive, at least make sure that your external hard drive is a very fast, high quality one. It will make your life so much better. My fastest external travel hard drive is my four terabyte Lassie Thunderbolt drive. It's very expensive, but it makes my edits faster. And if it saves five to 20 minutes per edit, for me, it's worth every single dollar. And one of the things I should definitely add is that all the Lassie drives I've shown in today's video actually come with a free data recovery period. So in the event that you ever had the unexpected problem with your drive, you can actually send it in for free and they'll have a level two recovery, which actually means they bring it to a clean room. So it's a pretty intensive process. If you're curious about any of the products you've seen here in this video, they will be linked down below. 
Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, then hit that subscribe button to get notified when new videos like this are posted. And if you want to learn more about the behind the scenes, how I run my business, how to become a filmmaker or a travel vlogger, I actually do weekly exclusive videos on Patreon, and it's all linked down below if you want to check out that community. It's definitely a great step to getting yourself on your way. And guys, without further ado, let's get lost again in the next one.